there is very little that we hate more than robocalls these days. Um, what can you tell me about robocalls in the era of COVID-19? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. The uh, the bad actors are 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 the people that, per- that perpetuate these types of these types of uh, these types of phone calls um, are really good at adapting to different scenarios. So uh, that's what they've done in, in this particular case. In that in that during during this COVID pandemic, they're fa- finding ways to to change their uh, their tactics to talk about uh, you know COVID nineteen, whether it be you know, a contact tracing scam or, you know, stimulus check scam or fake cures, et cetera. They, uh, they're, they're very good about, you know, becoming topical and, and sound convincing to, uh, to be able to try to defraud people of, uh, of, you know, their hard earned money. What can you tell me about how Texas is experiencing this? Yeah. So Texas actually ranks number two in the country on receiving unwanted robocalls uh, behind California, about 130 million to date. Uh, Houston and Dallas are the top two, obviously, in, in the state of Texas. Dallas is slightly uh, at 39 million, but Houston is not far behind at 38 million, uh, number two in the state. And that's about each, each of those uh, metropolitan areas account for about 30% of the unwanted calls in the, uh, in the state of Texas. So uh, they're getting quite a bit. And we've gotten all kinds of warnings about emails, don't click. There are all kinds of scams going on there. What is um, uh, amazingly with these calls or texts or however they're reaching people, the robocalls, they're getting a response from people. How how bad is the impact? Yeah, so so I know that um, you know if you look at look at the if you look at the data from from the FTC, uh, Federal Trade Commission, you know. It's 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 in the it's in the you know close to a, a hundred million dollars, which is you know quite alarming that 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 there's been that many and those are the people that have complained. There's probably several that uh, you know have been scammed and didn't realize that they were scammed as well. Um, you know they thought it was a legitimate call and 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 they didn't know any better. What can a person do? We keep hearing about legislation possible and investigations and what the FTC is doing, but it, it seems like these are continuing. Uh, first question, are these con- at the same number they had been, or is there an increase? Uh, there actually had been a decrease from about March to June um, with, with the COVID lockdowns uh, you know, in the United States and in other countries. Um, there was a challenge for those those call originators or people, you know, placing calls, whether it legit be legitimate, legit be legitimate or, you know, the illegitimate bad actors, um, they had to shift to, you know, work from home conditions. So it took them a while to move from the, you know, going into a contact center to being able to work from home, had a bigger impact on the, uh, on the bad actors, uh, which told us that, that uh, these guys were actually using, um, you know, call centers to to originate their calls, uh, which which was you know a, a neat insight. So we saw a drop from probably March to June, but you know since since we've had the restrictions ease, we're starting to see you know an increase again in July, you know in July and August, and 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 a little bit in June. Um, and so yeah, they're back. They're unfortunately back on the back on the rise. And what um, what can we do? What what is coming up to save us? Yeah, so there's there, there's a a bill that was passed at the end of last year called the Trace Act. Um, basically, put in place a a call authentication framework to help reduce the amount of spoofing or where uh, you know a bad actor can you know use use a caller ID or, or caller number. Um, and make it look like they're calling from from a different number than a different number than they really are. Uh, that's that uh, software is you know being put into place by all the major tier one wireless carriers. It'll continue um, you know to the smaller regional and 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 uh, other players as well. And that'll help that'll help reduce you know spoofing. But until that gets more fully deployed. Um, which will happen by the middle of next year, uh, you know, we'll continue to have, uh, you know, that problem. But, you know, the good news is the FCC is starting to, you know, crack down a lot more. They've, you know, they find a lot, they find, uh, 
you know, things, and you know, they 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 found these scams much more quicker, uh, and, and being able to trace it back to you know the origin of, of where it's coming from. So they've put put on notice now two times uh, this year. Uh, you know, people that were uh, you know helping with with this type of uh, this type of traffic to shut it down, shut it down, or face face consequences. So both from a law enforcement perspective and from a technology perspective. It's 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 going to get better, but you know it's going to take it's going to take some time. 